All right, so in this video, I'm going to be exposing Whitney Cummings for being a massive hypocrite and an extremely fake person, maybe the fakest person I've ever covered on this channel, which is saying a lot. But this whole situation just looks really bad for her. But if she thinks anything's inaccurate here or wants to correct me on anything, she's free to respond. But I have a feeling her immediate reaction to this will be to try to have this video taken down. But I'll give her some advice here. That's a terrible idea and it's not going to help at all. So Whitney Cummings has been a big supporter of the Me Too movement and has been really outspoken about those issues. You know, I think she's the first comedian, along with Amy Schumer, to make a statement on the Chris D'Elia allegations. Like she addressed it within a couple days after everything came out. And some people felt like she's just being kind of fake about it. And she was only speaking out because she was nervous it could affect her own career in Hollywood. Since her and Chris were known to be good friends with each other and they've worked together, you know, he's the co-star of her show and they've done podcasts together. So after he got canceled, she immediately separated herself from him and she made a statement about it and deleted all his episodes, all his appearances that he made on her podcast. And same thing with Brian Callen. When he got canceled, she deleted all his appearances too. So she's one of the few comedians to take a really hard stance against both of them and cut them off completely. I mean, obviously most comedians stop working with them, but not many made such a strong statement about it. And Whitney said a lot of comedians were upset with her because of her stance on this. And I think it's mostly because it just seemed fake. You know, like this was a PR move from her to make sure that this doesn't affect her own career at all. Because it's really hard to believe she made this statement just because she cares so much about the victims and everything. You know, it seems like she did this just to try to make sure it doesn't affect her. So this is what she said. It's taken me a couple days to process the information I've learned about Chris. I'm devastated and enraged by what I've read and learned. This is a pattern of predatory behavior. This abuse of power is enabled by silence. Now that I'm aware, I won't be silent. So that's pretty ironic, considering recently she's been completely silent about the very serious allegations made against her current boyfriend. And not only is she quiet about it, but I think there's also a possibility, which I'm going to get into here, that she might be trying to help her boyfriend silence his alleged victim. So now it's possible she's doing the complete opposite of what she pretended like she's doing in the Chris D'Elia situation. And I think it's because she probably figured that nobody would catch on to this and they could just make this story go away really quickly. But this is a classic example of the Streisand effect. I mean, I don't know if these people will ever learn. So here's what's going on. Whitney's currently dating this professional skateboarder, Chris Cole. And recently, a couple months ago, on May 14th, his ex-wife, who he also has kids with, made this Instagram post alleging that Chris was abusive towards her. Like a few things she said throughout this were, I have PTSD from the violence I dealt with. Also, I was instantly treated like property and subhuman. And she also talked about how when she first met Chris, he didn't like that their names are too similar. Her name's Christine. So he said, that will never work. We can't have the same name and I'm more famous, so I win. And then she said after that, he just started calling her Red because she's a redhead. And I guess that basically changed her name and that's what everybody started to call her. So she's also telling people her name's actually Christine. So after she posted this, I don't think it really got that much attention. Like Chris probably would have been better off just not doing anything about it and trying to just ignore it. But his ex said that he lost one of his smaller sponsors and she thinks that kind of scared him. So then he issued her a cease and desist letter demanding that she retracts her post. And I think that just made her want to talk about it even more. She said, I will not do that. That is out of the question. But his letter was very clear. Post a retraction or else you'll face hundreds of thousands of dollars in a lawsuit and settlement. She said, it's very easy for me to believe that this was a scare tactic designed to get me to back down. And it is my belief that his girlfriend set him up with this attorney, which I'd imagine she's referring to Whitney Cummings there. So, I mean, this is crazy, and it seems like that could be true. First of all, she says Chris is somebody that couldn't even find his own divorce attorney, and she had to help him with that. And then also, you know, I'm sure Whitney has way more connections than him and has more money than him. And the lawyer that he's working with is a big-time Hollywood lawyer who's represented celebrities like Charlie Sheen, Michael Jackson, and Bill Cosby. So if it's true that Whitney's trying to help silence Chris's alleged victim by hooking him up with the same attorney that represented Bill Cosby, this would be a terrible look for her.
And even if that's not true, Whitney has to at least know about this. I mean, her and Chris spend a lot of time together and it's definitely affecting him. Like if he's talking to lawyers and apparently he's also deleting comments and stuff, which isn't a good sign for him. But obviously, like I'm sure he's talking about this with her and she knows about it for sure. How could she not? And she's still posting pictures with him to Instagram. It's crazy. But of course, she's posting them to her story so people can't comment on it. And just yesterday or like a day or two ago, she posted a few with him and one of them she said, best dude, and then tagged him, which is wild. I mean, this is pretty much equivalent to when everything was coming out about Chris D'Elia, if she were to post a picture with him and be like, oh, he is the best. So she really just does not give a shit here and is maybe even trying to kind of defend him with this post, or maybe it's like an F you to his ex. And I think the reason Whitney feels comfortable posting pictures with him is because she probably figured this story would just go away. Nobody would hear about it, you know, because it still is a really small story until this video. But her and Chris probably figured once he gets that lawyer and sends his ex a cease and desist, there's no way she'd want to deal with that. You know, it would probably scare her away because obviously they have way more money and they could just run her dry. But it seemed like that letter kind of had the opposite effect. And now she wants to talk about it even more and prove that this stuff actually did happen. So I think going to that lawyer just made things even worse for him because it's also not really a good sign if that's what you have to resort to. And then also what makes things look worse for him and what gives his wife some credibility is the fact that their son, who I think is 18 years old, is speaking out in support of his mom. He said, I've witnessed what my mom went through and she deserves the space to tell her story and how it's affected the lives of our family. She deserves support. So if you value me as a friend or her as a human being, show her that you stand with her and who she worked to be. So that's pretty big. And then what else gives her credibility is this story she told on a podcast about like nine or 10 years ago. And she's still with Chris at the time. So she's not even telling this story to expose him or make him look bad or anything, even though it definitely does. And I think she's telling it because her friend thought it was really funny or something, even though it just sounds like Chris is unhinged. She talks about how they're planning to do something, like go out with the kids maybe or something. And Chris said he wanted to skate instead. So she was kind of getting frustrated with him and they got in an argument. And then when she's leaving, she's driving away. And Chris was really pissed at her, so he threw a bike pump at her car windshield and it broke and almost smashed her in the face. So I left and went in the car and I was going to try and pull out of the garage, but the garage took way too long. So he came in and he was just like, ah, and smashed the hood of my car, like as hard as he could. And I had these two huge dents in my green car. And so he says he walks away and it didn't relieve as much pressure as he wanted it to. So he sees a bike pump and he just picks it up and just hurls it at the car and it just shatters the windshield. And at first, like as he's walking away, I'm like, well, now he's going to have to fix it. And I'm just like super pissed and like just girly and bitchy about it. And then he throws the bike pump and it just shatters my windshield. And I was like, oh my God, like that was so close. It's just shattering my face. Like, oh my God, it's crazy. Like, what do I do right now? And again, at this time, they're still married, which I think is important because it's not like she's telling the story to call him out or expose him or make him look bad. So there'd be no reason for her to make this up at all. So with all that, it seems like there's a good chance she's telling the truth about the stuff she's accusing him of. And I mean, he could always respond to it and give his side of the story and try to dispute what she's saying. But right now, the way he's handled it so far, it's not looking good for him. So here's a clip of her going into a little more detail about everything that allegedly happened. I was financially controlled. I was pushed downstairs. My teeth were broken with a beer bottle. I had 100 pound suitcases thrown at me at skate contest. I was choked multiple times to the point of not thinking I would survive. My children's lives were threatened. He threatened to unalive my children. My kids witnessed all of this. I have evidence. So that's where I'm at currently. In May, I had posted a video to ask my friends and family to call me my real name and not the nickname that I was given by him. From there, I was issued a cease and desist. It is my belief that the reason he was able to issue that cease and desist is because he is in close proximity to someone who has access to a lawyer like Marty Singer. And at the end there, it sounds like she could possibly be referring to Whitney Cummings hooking him up with that lawyer. So I think there's a good chance Whitney's helping him with this. But even if that's not true, just the fact that she's still with him is insanely hypocritical. I mean, it's ridiculous. You know, she clearly doesn't care too much about these issues like she claims she did when Chris D'Elia got canceled. 
Like, also, I saw a couple comments about Whitney's boyfriend, Chris, that he allegedly might have started dating Christine when she was 16. So I think Whitney must just be attracted to creepy Chris's, and she's really shown her true colors with this. So she has some explaining to do here, and I guess we'll just see how she handles it. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And then make sure you go check out my Patreon account. I have another Whitney Cummings video on there about the time Tim Dillon humbled her. It'd be a good video to watch after this. Or also you keep updated on all the Kill Tony drama. I've been covering a lot of that and how David Lucas is kind of falling apart on there. But also there's just a ton of other stuff, over 80 videos. There's a lot to go through. So make sure you go check it out. Put a link in the description.